Now, D Local Limited has hit its 52 week low, its annual low price, and that is $9.15 a share. But Yahoo analysts estimate that this stock can move up to $16.22 a share in the next 12 months. If that happens, that will be an increase of 77.27%. Hey guys, um, today I'm going to be talking about a company called D Local Limited. Now, D Local Limited has hit its 52 week low, its annual low price, and that is $9.15 a share. But Yahoo analysts estimate that this stock can move up to $16.22 a share in the next 12 months. If that happens, that will be an increase of 77.27%. Now, you know the stocks that are on my watch list. I break down into three tiers. The three star is the most fundamentally sound. Two stars is a little belief that and one star is the least fundamentally sound, but still fundamentally sound enough to make my watch list. This company I rated as a two star, but there's only one issue that I saw with them. Otherwise, I would have rated them as a three star. But in any event, let's jump over into the analysis for this stock. Okay, normally when it comes to the analysis for these companies, I would be jumping over into my spreadsheet and showing you all the numbers. But now I have something even better, which not only benefits me in my analysis of stocks, but it benefits you guys as well. And that is an app that's been created to do ex exactly my form of stock analysis, which is what? Which is to search the annual low price of the 52 week low every day that the market is opened to see what fundamentally sound stocks have fell to their annual low price. So I'm going to show you what brought me to choose this stock. One of the first things that the app does is it looks at the 52 week low every day and searches for stocks that have positive earnings per share every year for the last five years. Now, that would seem like a common thing, but actually it's not. There's a lot of companies on the stock market that don't make money. Their earnings per share every year is negative. So this app will find the ones that are positive. So, for example, we have Robert Half here, $3.93 in 2019, $2.72 in 2020, $5.42 in 2021, $6.08 in 2022, and $3.90 in 2023. Now, it does have positive earnings for all five years, but what I like to see is for those earnings to be increasing every year, or at least four of the five years. Like, for example, if we go down to Accenture, 749 in 2019, 803 in 2020, 931 in 2021, 1087 in 2022, and 1090 in 2023. So we have a few 
companies who had positive earnings these years. But like I said, I like to see the ones with earnings per share is increasing. But let's say I wanted to narrow this list down even more. I could actually come to this filter for companies who bought back their stocks all five years. If I choose all years. And now it will make that list even smaller. I can choose companies where the current assets are greater than the current liabilities. And now it will make that list even smaller. And I can choose companies had, that had a 20% profit margin or greater. And now that list is even smaller. Notice it's down to one company now, but I'm going to change it. I'm going to choose companies with a profit margin of 10% or greater. And now we have one, two, we have four companies. Let's go to stock buybacks barring two years. That would be three years that they bought back their own stocks. And here we have d -Lo. And that's what made me cho choose d -Lo for the stock we're analyzing today. Now, if I click on the ticker symbol It brings up the complete analysis for this stock. No, long, no more need for me to fill out my spreadsheets or for you to have to go through that process either. It's all here for you. At the top, it tells you exactly what the company does. Then we're going to look at the earnings per share. It doesn't have the last five years, but it has the last three. In 2021, it was 26 cents a share. 2022, it was 37 cents a share. 2023, it was 49 cents a share. And now here we are in 2024. It's projected so far to be 44 cents a share that may decrease it may increase but that's where it's projected so far now if we look at the low price for this stock over the last three years in 2021 it was a, at a low of $29.57 and it increased to a high of $73.43 in that same year. That was a 148.33% increase over the course of the year. In 2022, it was at $9.03 at the low price increased to $36.88 at the high price. That was an increase of 308.42% over the course of the year. And in 2023, it was at $9.04 at the low price. It increased to a high of $24.22 at the high price. That was an increase of $167.92% over the course. I'm sorry, that was an increase of 167.92% over the course of the year. Now, what about this year? It's 2024. Is there a way to make a projection as to what this stock is going to move up to? 
There's actually two, but we're just going to go through one today. One way is through our P-E ratios, which I'll show you guys in another video. But another simpler way is that there are lots of websites that will give an estimate. And I'm just going to use one. I'm going to go to yahoo.com, click on finance, and then I can type in the ticker symbol. And on the summaries tab, when it comes up, we see the stock price right here. If we scroll down some, we see one year target estimate, $16.22. So let's type that in right here where it says where it's 52 week high under projected i'm gonna type in that was sixteen dollars and twenty two cents hit enter and what does it show it'll show me the projected percentage increase so if this stock moves up to where Yahoo projects it will move up to, which is $16.22, that will be a 77.27% increase from where it is right now. But remember, over the last three years, this stock increased 148%, 308%, or 167 and 167 percent so it may only move up 77 percent or it may move up closer to where it moved up in the previous years but in any event this is just a projection now the current price of the stock is nine dollars and fifteen cents Projected earnings per share, 44 cents. And the current PE is 20.8. That's important. Because if we look at the low PEs for the last three years, in 2021, it was 112. 2022 it was 24 and in 2023 it was 18.45 so of the last three years only once did it go below where the current PE is right now now let's see if it was to fall there again current PE is 20.80 but let's say it fell to 18.45 times 0.44 current projected earnings per share. That gives us $8.18. So if this stock was to fall to the lowest PE in the last three years, which was 18.45, with the current earnings per share, it would go down to $8.11. But if we working out PE, let's see here. From here to, from 18.45 to 49.43, I'm gonna leave off the ends of the decimals just from 18 to 49 is 31. So let's see where the P is right now. 
Right now the PE is 20.8 plus 31, 51.8. And if we said 51.8 times the current earnings per share, that would give us 22.79. So if we worked it out by PE ratio, instead of moving up to $16.22, this stock could even have the potential of moving up to $22.79 based on PE ratio. Now let's go down and look at a few things. We see that I don't really look at book value much in my stock analysis and those who know about my YouTube channel there's a video called the truth about book value which explains why but in any event the book value is a dollar and 61 cents or the PB ratio is 5.68 and the beta is 0 0.94 with a free cash flow yield of 5.88% bear in mind that's, well, in this case, it would be averaged by, the free cash flow will be averaged over three years. Normally, I do it over five. Okay, so let's jump down into the fundamentals for this stock. If we look at the income statement, in 2021, they made $244 million. 120,000. Of that, they retain 77,876,000. That was a 31.9% profit margin. In 2022, the company made 418,925,000. In overall sales and revenue. After paying all expenses, they retained 108683000 That was a 25.94% profit margin. And in 2023, they made 650000000 three hundred and fifty one thousand in overall sales and revenue of that they retained after paying all expenses a hundred and forty eight million nine hundred and sixty four thousand that was a twenty two point ninety one percent profit margin so their profit margin is dropping over the years but their overall sales and revenue is increasing. Their net income is increasing. And the profit margin is still above 20%. If we go down to the return on equity, their return on equity It here so we could see the years. Their return on equity in 2021 was 27.78% or percent. In 2022, it was 27.2%. And in 2023, it was 32.74%. And I would say that's that's a good return on equity. 
if it was around 10%, I would say it was decent. But at above 20%, I would say it's good. It's what we're looking for. The debt to equity, we know we like it to be below 200% in 2021. It was 107.99 in 2022. It was 106.77. And in 2023, it was 138.3. Which would mean it's a pretty decent balance sheet. We see uh, current assets that are above the current liabilities for all three years and total assets that are above the total liabilities for all three years. This company did not pay a dividend. Now, we notice that for all three years, they bought back their own shares of stock, which we love to see as investors. The only problem is they sold more shares as well, which we hate to see as investors. That's why I would have rated this company a two-star rather than a three. So if we look at 2021, they sold $150 265,000 more shares worth. But they bought 638,000 more shares worth. In 2022, they bought, how should I say? In 2022, they sold 3,939,000 worth in terms of shares. And they bought back 2,021,000 worth in terms of shares. Now, in 2023, they didn't issue more shares. They didn't sell any more shares, which we love to see. But they bought back... 97929000 worth. That's what we love to see. Now, what about free cash flow, the money left over at the end of the year by this company? Well, in terms of free cash flow, this company had 60469000 um, in 2021, 142 million, 99,000 in 2022, and 275 million, 228,000 in 2023. And one of the reasons I like to look at free cash flow is particularly if the company pays a dividend the free cash flow will let you know if they can afford to pay that dividend. Because in this line down here, if they can't afford to pay that dividend, maybe they took out a loan or whatever to, buy, to issue those dividends, it'll show up as a negative number. But in the, in the case of this company, they haven't issued dividends in the last three years. So free cash flow and free cash flow after dividends is the same number. Now, the app wasn't able to pick up these figures, but I'm going to tell you where you could find them. If you go to Yahoo Financing, you choose statistics. We're looking for 
shares held by insiders, 11.44%. That's 11.44%. And institutional investors, 79.36%. Now, to explain what those two numbers are, insiders, those are people who work for or are involved with the company what percentage of them own the shares of this company? Usually that's a very small number. It may be 1%, less than 1%. For many companies, it's less than 1%. So for a company to have 11.44% of inside investors, I would say that's a considerable number. And it says that the people in the company who work for the company have confidence in the company. Institutional investors are large banks and institutions. So for 79.36% to be owned by large banks and institutions, I'd say that's a pretty decent number when you consider that the total amount of outstanding shares of this company is 154 million. Now, the dividend date, when does this company pay a dividend? And I'm going to go back to the summary. Matter of fact, let's go back to statistics. Scroll towards the bottom. And right here on the dividend date and splits. If it had it, it would be here. Dividend date and X dividend date. And we see we don't have that information. Now, just to explain that, some companies pay dividends, some don't, but the dividend date is when that company is planning on paying dividends to its shareholders if it pays a dividend. The X dividend date is the date that you have to own it by in order to be eligible for that dividend. So, for example, let's say the X dividend date was May 31st. That means you would have to own those shares before the ex-dividend date. That would be May 30th in order to be eligible for those dividends. And lastly, we have management, competition, and future of company information I feel is valuable. You guys would have to do a little research for this. You may have to... Um, if we come here to profile and scroll down a little, it will let you know the CEO and director. So for example, the CEO and director of DLO is 
Mr. Pedro Arndt. And we see that he was born in 1974. So that would be management competition. We can put down what industry and sector that company is in. For example, D Local Limited is in the software infrastructure industry and the technology sector. We could put that down here. But you may want to go to Google or some other source to find out things like, okay, when did that CEO and director get assigned the CEO and director? Because there's a big difference if you analyze a company and the CEO and director has been there for one month compared to if the CEO and director has been there seven years and you've analyzed the last five years of the company. If he's been there seven years, you know it's going to pretty much run the same, that it's pretty much run the same throughout the course of time that you analyzed it for. And as long as he's going to be in there, it may continue to be the same. Whereas if this person's just been the CEO and director for a month, you're pretty much not sure exactly what's going to happen. You may also want to look at things like which company is the head of the software infrastructure industry. Well, where does this company fall? Are they first, are they second, are they 31st, or whatever the case is? So, even though these things aren't pulled in by the app, even things like what's projected as far as the future of the company, even though they're not filled in by the app, we left the boxes there so that you guys can do a little research, fill that in by yourself, and then me print this out so that you have something to refer back to at a later time. But in any event, guys, that's our stock analysis for D Local Limited. And I look forward to speaking to you guys in the next video.